This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Once again, you can catch our programs. All of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. The reason we archive them is because repetition is one of the best way to learn. If you sit down and watch these programs with Jim Records on his four things he sees going on for 2023, you will learn more. But more importantly, watch a friend or family member or your idiot brother-in-law to watch it and then discuss it, and you'll be a lot smarter. So, Jim, we've, we've covered uh, Ukraine, uh, Russia, and China. And I've never heard that, you know, that terrifies me, the idea of an escalating nuclear war, because there's no such thing as a small nuclear war. And um, so what else do you see coming for 2023? Well, you're right, Robert. We did uh, uh, China and COVID, and uh, we did Russia and Ukraine and uh, the possibility of nuclear war, which is way too high right now. Uh, So let's bring it back home, as uh, Bob Dylan said, and we'll talk about what's going on in the U.S. Of course, the U.S. is the world's largest economy. The U.S. dollar is the world's largest reserve currency. So what happens here doesn't stay here. Uh, and uh, we're heading for a very uh, severe recession. I just want to kind of explain briefly the dy- dynamics of that. Um, so the Fed's raising interest rates. We know that they started, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago, but March 1st, 2022, the Fed policy rate was zero. It was zero percent. Today, um, it's four and a half percent. So uh, that's four and a half percent in about eight or nine months. Uh, people remember Paul Volcker. Oh, Paul Volcker raised interest rates to 20%. Well, he did, but uh, so so far, Powell hasn't raised them as high. Jay Powell, the chairman of the Fed, hasn't raised them as high, but he's raised them fast. I mean, even when Volcker was working his way to 20%, it took three years from 1979 to 1982. Uh, and um, Jay Powell has done this in, I guess, say eight, eight or nine months. So that's a very rapid, very steep uh, path. Um, they started with uh, you know, baby steps, 25 percent, uh, sorry, 25 basis points uh, last March, um, and then uh, 50 basis points following that. But then four hikes in a row, 75 basis points each. And the most recent one, just uh, a few days ago, was uh, was 50 basis points, but got us up to four and a half percent. So, so what's going on? Uh, so, I want to talk about three views of the world. I'll, I'll be brief. The first is. Jay Powell's view. What is Jay? What is Powell's plan? What is Jay Powell doing? The second perspective is what does the market think is going to happen? The market doesn't necessarily have to agree with Powell. And then the third thing is what's really happening because that's the most important because the market has it wrong too. So we'll do the Powell plan, the market view, and what's really going on. So Powell's plan is clear because he's told us five times. Uh, he's starting to worry that no one's listening, but he gave speeches. Uh, August 26th in Jackson Hole, September 21st in Washington, D.C., November 2nd, again, in Washington, D.C. at an FOMC meeting, November 30th at the Brookings Institution, and again on December 14th at an FOMC meeting in Washington. So it's five speeches, and he said the same thing all five times. He said inflation is job one. You know, it's not that we don't care, but unemployment is going to go up. We're going to have a recession. He doesn't use the R word, by the way, but it's implicit in everything he says. We are going to have a recession. Unemployment is going up. And too bad. It's kind of too bad because we got to get inflation under control. And so the Fed is in search of something that they call the um, the terminal rate. What's the terminal rate? The terminal rate is a rate that's high enough to bring inflation down on its own without further hikes. So it doesn't have to be higher than inflation. It has to be high enough to cause inflation to come down to the Fed's goal of 2% without hiking more. And when they get there to that terminal rate, they'll sit tight, they call it the pause. And the pause could be a year. And Powell said this, again, this is right out of his script, to mid 2024 perhaps before they actually cut rates. So um, Powell's in search of the terminal rate. By the way, if you said to me, hey, Jim, what's the terminal rate? I would say, I would answer truthfully. I would say, I don't know, but neither does Jay Powell. Jay Powell doesn't know what the terminal rate is. He's he's kind of saying, we'll know it when we see it, uh, but um, but we're not there yet and we're going to keep going. And um, they they have what they call the DOTS, silly name, but uh, the, the members of the Board of Governors and the Federal Reserve Bank presidents put... Um, give estimates or the, you know, their estimates of unemployment, inflation, uh, growth, and interest rates for the next three years. 
uh, and they put them as dots on the chart. So they call it the dots. Uh, and then, you know, Wall Street gets the dots. They do a central tendency and regressions and all this stuff. By the way, I one of the top Fed insiders, like, I mean, like practically sits in Jay Powell's lap and has all the way back to Bernanke and Yellen, told me personally, he said, the, the inside the Fed, they regard the dots as a joke. They're not better than guesses. Their forecasting ability is dismal. You or I would have better forecasts. And they wish they could get out of it, but they don't know how. So, so that's the truth. But the problem is Wall Street and the financial media and the talking heads on CNBC, they want to talk about the dots. And it does affect market behavior. So even though it's a joke, even though the forecasts are terrible, you have to pay attention because it affects the markets. And if you're affecting the markets, you're on the wrong side, you're going to get run over. So I look at the dots, not because I put weight on them as predictive analytic tools, but because the market pays attention. So we have to pay attention. So the dots say that the terminal rate is going to be approximately 5.1%. They're not going to have a 0.1%. So five and a quarter is a, is a good estimate. That Five and a quarter is your best guess as to what the Fed thinks the terminal rate is, because that's what they said in the dots. So we're four and a half now. So how do you get from four and a half to five and a quarter? What's well, three 25 basis point hikes? That would be um, uh, February 1st. Uh, the one after that is uh, uh, March 22nd. And the one after that is early May. I'm not sure the exact, May 3rd or 4th. I think it's May 3rd. So you're going to see more rate hikes, 25 basis points each, uh, February 1st, March 22nd, and May 3rd. That's going to get you to five and a quarter. At that point, they should say, okay, we're at the terminal rate. We'll sit tight and let inflation come down. So that's what Powell's going to do. Here's, the, here's what the market says. Okay, so that's the Powell plan. We already know it. The market says, hey, inflation is already coming down. Well, it is. That's actually true. Inflation peaked on a year-over-year basis. Monthly report calculated year-over-year -year was 9.1% in June, but it's come down to from, from you know high eights, mid eights, low eights, 7.7, 7.1. Now, 7.1 is still high. Don't get me wrong. Inflation is still high, too high. I buy gas and shop for groceries just like everybody else, so it's still too high. But it has come down from 9.1% to 7.1% in the last um, five, uh, five months. And so the market says, hey, you, you did it. You're, you know, you're already there. Inflation is coming down. Why don't you stop? And by the way, you're going to get the memo, you know, maybe in February or sometime soon, you're going to get the message. The economy is going to be slowing down. Inflation is going to be coming down. You're going to, you're going to hit the pause button early, meaning maybe as early as February. And then you're going to cut rates. This is the famous pivot. Whenever you hear of the Fed pivot, that's when the Fed turns around and starts cutting rates instead of raising them. And that'll be just in time and growth will slow, but it won't be too bad. And we'll come in for soft landing. And this is the Goldilocks scenario. Uh, so again, typical Wall Street, get the pom-poms out. The Fed's going to cut rates by March. And so buy stocks. That's all Wall Street knows is buy stocks. So that's Wall Street's version. So there's the power plan and then Wall Street's version. Here's the reality. There is a chance that we are already at the terminal rate. But the conundrum is, is inflation coming down because the Fed is still hiking? Or is the inflation coming down because they're at the terminal rate? Well, we don't know. It's kind of hard to sort those things out. Powell would say, yeah, it's coming down. I know that, of course, but I got it's, it's because I'm hiking and I'm going to keep doing it. My view is, no, you're, you actually did it. It's mission accomplished. You just don't know it. You're fighting. You're like the you know the Japanese in the uh, in the caves fighting four years after the end of World War II. I mean, you're still raising rates, and you already got to where you want to go. Um, that means, as usual, they're going to screw it up. They're going to blunder. They're going to go too far, and the, it's not going to be a mild recession. It's not going to be Goldilocks. In this version, Goldilocks gets eaten by the bears. In other words, you're going to throw this economy into a very deep recession because you're going to go too far, as usual. And you're not going to know it until too, too late. By the time you realize you've it's mission accomplished, you will have gone too far, too long. Rates are going to be too high. And it's not going to be a soft landing. It's going to be a hard. So, uh, so Jim, I'm going to be, Jim, I'm be respectful to your hard stop. And um, the Rich Dad Radio shows the good news and bad news about money. And I'd like to ask you to talk about what, you know, I see you on YouTube also, and I said YouTube is full of experts today. But Jim's one of the few guys I respect the most, and I trust his word. 
And Jim also has solutions because otherwise, you know, I'm on suicide watch. It's only 11 o'clock in the morning here in Arizona. And I feel like I need a drink <laughs> to solve the pain here, Jim. So um, without disclosing everything, I, I, you know, your book sold out is incredible. And as you, you talk about supply chain is the economy and also, but you do have solutions that you offer on other programs and all this. So the good news is what can a person do? The average mom and pop, you know what I mean? What can they do in 2023? I mean, what is your um, program you offer? Because you have solutions for people. Yeah, th thank you, Robert. And that's a great question. And you're right. I uh, give a pretty tough analysis. I don't yeah. consider myself a doom and gloom person. I get called that all the time, but I, I'm actually a very optimistic person. But I'm also a realistic person and analyst. And I don't think you serve listeners or readers or viewers very well if you don't kind of tell it like it is. So uh, so we we deliver it uh, straight, um, but uh, but I also offer solutions because I think that's kind of your obligation. Um, a couple of things would be obvious from this. Number one, reduce your exposure to equities. If if Wall Street's talking up the stock market based on the soft landing Goldilocks scenario, but Powell's going to stick to his guns and, and and raise rates too high, that's going to cause stocks to crash very severely, very suddenly. If, if the market were adjusting, say, yeah, Powell means it, uh, it's going to keep, man, we ought to come down a little bit. That would be one thing, but that's not what's happening. The market's trying to rally. Powell's warning people what's going to happen. They're not listening and it is going to happen. So markets will crash. So lighten up your equity exposure. This, the, I'm not saying sell every single stock. There's room uh, for a slice of stocks. I would, uh, for the stock portion of your portfolio, I would look at uh, energy, like, you know, companies like, um, uh, you know, the, the obvious names, you know, Chevron, BP, ExxonMobil, Marathon, because they have refining capacity. We're not getting away from oil and natural gas, you know, in, in my lifetime, probably not in this century. Um, you know, the whole, uh, I, you know, I, I've got nothing against solar power and windmill, but it, windmills, but if you think you can run a modern power grid on that, you don't, you know, nothing about physics, you know, nothing about the baseline power needed to maintain a power grid, you know, nothing about um, the chemicals needed to make batteries for electric vehicles. There's not enough lithium in the world to uh, to make more than a small fraction of all the batteries they say they're going to have, not to mention the fact you use up more energy mining the minerals, the cobalt, the lithium, the copper, and, and the nickel you need for the batteries. Then you say having the batteries themselves, they wear out after eight years. Uh, and how much energy and water do you use to do the mining to get the lithium to make the batteries? And why is that good for the environment? So n none of it makes sense. It's an ideological crusade by a bunch of elite eggheads who have a hidden agenda, which is about transferring wealth from the northern to southern hemisphere. So you have to see through this, the, what I call the Green News scam. Um, so that means that oil and natural gas have been so beaten down by the Larry Finks of the world that, uh, but we're going to need them. There's no substitute. Those are really uh, good stocks to buy. So I would lighten up on equities overall, but to the extent I had an equity slice, I would look at the energy sector. I would um, get treasury notes, 10-year uh, notes uh, I, I like, but um, if they're a little too volatile, season to taste, you can look at a two-year note or five-year note or a two-year note where you have less volatility. Um, given the scenario I outlined where there's a severe recession right around the corner, that means interest rates are going to come down a lot. I know everyone's talking about inflation. That's fine. But deflation is right around the corner and no one's looking for it. Interest rates come down a lot. That means there could be huge capital gains on those notes. And of course, they're very high quality from a credit perspective. Uh, so, you know, 10, five or two year notes. Uh, treasury notes, not not uh, junk bonds, uh, the treasury notes in your portfolio. I have a big slice of cash, um, maybe as much as 30%. People say, I hate cash because it has no yield. Well, first of all, in if we have deflation, uh, cash could be your best performing asset because the real value of money goes up, not down. Uh, it goes down in inflation, but it goes up in deflation. But cash also has embedded optionality, meaning if things are crashing and burning all around you, the, the person with cash who's not stuck in the wrong asset class can go shopping. You can pick up the bargains. And um, by the way, the biggest cash hoard in the world right now is probably uh, Warren Buffett at uh, Berkshire Hathaway he has $130 billion in cash. Why? Because he sees what I see. He sees what we're talking about. The wreck is coming. And again, you get to go shopping. Uh, I like real estate. Um, not so much commercial real estate. I think it's early, but residential real estate, multifamily housing, um, 
uh, farm, other kinds of income producing real estate. Uh, that's a winner. Um, I like gold, but you know, 10%, I, you know, people say, yeah, Jim Rickard says, sell everything, buy gold. I've never said that. I don't think it's a good idea, but 10% slice gold and silver, by the way, silver, um, will, um, you know, in a real severe crisis or social disorder, uh, a monster box, which is 501 ounce American silver eagles costs, uh, you know, maybe $15,000 or so at the, at the market. Um, that's like, uh, to me, it's like having, a you know, batteries and flashlight and water and plywood and a hurricane, you know, you, you want a monster box around. So, so, that, and that's, by the way, that's real diversification. Um, you know, I run into people, they've got 50 stocks and they say, I'm highly diversified. I've got 50 stocks in 10 sectors, you know, semiconductors, minerals, mining, uh, consumer non-durables. Like if you're not diversified, you may have 50 stocks, but you're in one asset class, stocks. stocks. They're all going to go down together or they're all going to go up together. But when you have a slice of stocks, gold, silver, real estate, cash, treasury notes, and you know maybe some private equity, et cetera, that's real diversification. And that portfolio will get you through the storm. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, I was, like I said, this is one of the strangest times, but you were talking about it way back when we talked about currency wars. And then when I saw FTX blow up and send with Sam Bankman frauds to kick up, and I said, I don't think Jaw saw, I don't think Jim saw Sam Bankman fraud, but that is a massive currency war. What is sitting on shockwaves all over the world? Because the big, is, it, is it the biggest Ponzi scheme ever? Uh, if you don't count the U.S. Treasury market, probably yes. Uh, but <laughs> uh, that one's been going on for 230 years. Alexander Hamilton figured that out a long time ago. <laughs> but um, yes, I believe it is. The, I um, I'll reserve judgment a little bit. There might be a bigger one out there. It's it maybe in our next interview. Uh, you know, we can mention the name. But uh, there's there's something out there that uh, is potentially 10 times worse than FTX in the. Uh, in terms of whether stable coins are really backed up with real dollars. Okay, Matt, junk may I ask one more question. Sure. What do you what do you see? Because you know, during the boom years, people added employees. Do you see unemployment increasing? I mean, I know better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, just uh, every day, you know, uh, Target, Amazon, uh, FedEx. The, today, uh, Goldman Sachs like firing five thousand employees. Uh, you know, Twitter, thousands of layoffs. Uh, I know they're individual cases, but uh, Amazon, same thing. They they add up. And then not to mention all when you get into recession, which is coming, all the small businesses that sadly just fail and lay off everybody. And by the way, unemployment is a lagging indicator. People go, well, there's no recession because unemployment is not going up enough. No, unemployment is a lagging indicator. When when you're under when you're in financial distress, you cut all your costs, you know, you turn out the lights, you do a lot of things first. The last thing you want to do is lay people off. So, but when things get bad enough and you start laying people off, of course, that's hard for those individuals, but you're already in the recession at that point. That's not a leading indicator. That's a lagging indicator. The leading indicators say the recession is definitely coming. So, but yeah, unemployment is going to go up a lot. Well, Jim, you know, all these years I followed you. And like I said, one of the biggest concerns I have about YouTube and all the experts on it, most of them aren't experts. Most of them only know the boom economy. And you have to be over 30 to have some, you know, lash marks across your back. It's called experience. And I treasure and I value our friendship. But and, you know, I, I just love being able to call you and get your point of view pretty quickly. But never, not everybody has the access I have. So I thank you for being so generous with your time. And um, keep up the good work, my friend. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. Bye. And we come back with a final word about what you can do before you, you know, before you slash your wrist and put yourself on suicide watch. We'll be right back with a few good words about money. We'll be right back. Robert's been warning us for years, time after time after time, his golden rule, invest in real assets. That's how he didn't just survive the last period of catastrophic inflation, he thrived, turning his first property into a real estate empire of over 7,000 units. But with history possibly repeating itself, real estate is being crushed under the thumb of the Fed, and we could be on the verge of another historic crash. Combined with rising inflation, the landing may be even harder than last time. But according to BlackRock CEO, 
CEO, Larry Fink, the largest asset manager in the world, there's one real asset that investors need to know about. Because of its resilience during times like these, Fink even calls it the new gold. He's talking about fine art. It makes sense. The last time inflation was this high, fine art handedly outpaced inflation, appreciating an average 130%. Now, fine art can be part of your portfolio for a fraction of what billionaires like Fink pay. All thanks to Masterworks. It's the new tech platform that lets you invest in shares of paintings by Warhol, Picasso, and Banksy. And the results so far have been incredible. With nine paintings sold, the last three returning 13, 17, and 21% net. No wonder over 600,000 users have invested more than half a billion dollars on Masterworks. And here's the best part. You can skip their wait list and try Masterworks for free by going to masterworks.art slash rich dad. That's masterworks.art slash rich dad. See important disclosures at masterworks.com slash cd. Hey everyone, it's Sarah at the Rich Dad Radio Show. Let me tell you, good sleep is the ultimate game changer and the 8 Sleep Pod is the ultimate sleep machine. I live in Arizona. It's over 100 degrees today and it's only expected to get hotter throughout the week. And the pod is the only sleep technology that dynamically cools and heats each side of the bed to maintain the optimal sleeping temperature for what your body needs. With the pod, you can start sleeping as cool as 55 degrees Fahrenheit or as hot as 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And clinical data shows that eight sleep users experience up to 19% increase in recovery, up to 32% improvement in sleep quality, and up to 34% more deep sleep. And 8sleep recently just launched the next generation of the pod. The new Pod 3 enables more accurate sleep and health tracking with double the amount of sensors, delivering you the best sleep experience on earth. And all you need to do is go to 8sleep.com slash richdad to start sleeping cool this summer and save up to $150 on the pod. 8sleep currently ships within the USA, Canada, the UK, select countries in the EU and Australia. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait, access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, The Rich Dad Radio Show. Good news and bad news about money. Uh, to pull you off a suicide watch, I'll give you some good news right now, what you can do, be proactive. But I especially want to thank and um, Jim Records, heartfelt thanks for him. I, I, I watch YouTube and I don't know who's a credible source. That's the most important thing. Who do you get your information from? And in the finance market, it is best you don't listen to anybody under 30 because all they've known is a good economy. And then that's why you buy the dip, don't fight the Fed and all that. Well, the Fed's the cause of our problem, along with the Treasury, as well as Wall Street. And that's why um, I thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio program. This is what do you see in 2023. And uh, hopefully you don't lose your job in 2023 or you lose your house. But I want to go into a few things you can do to not be a victim of what's happening. Any comments there, Sarah? I just want to make a quick comment. Something we heard in Ken's radio show uh, is how he's hoarding cash because things in a crash go on sale and that's the biggest buying opportunity. Right. And Jim mentioned that as well. Having cash as part of your um, diversification is, he yeah. feels is important. So I thought I just wanted to mention that carryover. Um, and then, you know, Jim is known online as doom and gloom. He always has bad news. <laughs> and But I really appreciated him. You know, the last 10 minutes of that show, he gave you um, tangible, real things that anybody can do. Probably not on a large scale like Kenny could do, but it's something to get started and to get your mindset in that, in that positive mode of what I can do rather than being a victim of circumstance. So right. I, very good episode. Jim, as always, is just... A firehouse of information. Yeah. And and Kenny realized he's an old guy, over 30 also. He has the experience of going up and down. We buy we buy damaged property all the time. I'm just I just invest. I'm not I'm not really a real estate guy. I invest in real estate because of debt. And the more debt I have, the less tax I pay. 
but that's financial education. Mm -hmm. yep. So I like to leave this with this thought right here, what Jim was saying is I don't save cash. I save gold and silver. And I've been saying that for most of my life. You know, I, I have tons, I, I literally do have tons of gold and silver. To me, that's cash because it's liquid. <laughs> if I have a gold coin, I can spend it today. So I'd rather save gold coins and silver coins. And I do. I own gold mines and silver mines. So a part of being an old guy and all this, and I've lost many opportunities because I just don't trust the stock market because in my opinion, and I could be wrong, I think the stock market is rigged. Just as gold and silver is rigged. You know, it's, it's called, I forget the name of all this stuff, but if you buy SLV, which is silver, it's an ETF, how do you know there's any silver there? You buy GLD, which is paper gold. How do you know there's any gold there? You really don't. So I'm kind of a skeptic and a cynic, much like or cautious. I'd rather have the physical gold and silver in my hands if you can get it. And the reason people are having a hard time getting because the premiums, let's say the spot of silver is 20 bucks. The premium may be an extra five bucks on top. The premium is because it's hard to get. So when premiums are going up, it's actually a good sign for me because I do own tons. Kim and I do own gold mines, silver mines, silver. We don't keep it out of the house. So don't come, don't come visit me. Or in safe vaults all over the world. The world. So I've been preparing for this crisis coming for years and years and years. So let me dumb it down because one of the best things about Rich Dad is we like to do our best to keep it simple. My philosophy, and I don't expect you to agree with me, is I don't touch anything the government can print. So I don't trust cash. <laughs> I don't trust stocks. I don't trust bonds. And I simply trust things they cannot print. So when I invest in oil, I don't oil, invest in oil stocks. I invest with my friend Mike Maselli because we own oil wells. So what happened was when Biden took the Keystone XL pipeline offline. This was one of the first acts he did. That's how I knew he was working for Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum. He took oil off the Keystone pipeline off. I was pumping oil at 30 bucks a barrel. So I was happy. The moment he cut off the Keystone pipeline at that time, I think it went over $100 a barrel. So I was watching Biden do this in 2020 when he came in. And I went, he's screwing us. Biden is intentionally screwing the poor middle class. So when the price of oil went up, unfortunately, I get richer. I have more cash. I buy more gold, silver, and real estate. The second thing, so I don't, I don't buy anything they can print. I invest in land and property, which is I control via the asset, the, the, the um, be called interest rates. I also own cattle. And I own Wagyu breeding bulls. Why Wagyu? Because Wagyu is a brand. The rich will always have money. Do I kill the cattle? No, I buy the bull. And what I want from the bull is a semen because they pay for the semen. It's called semen flow or cash flow. So just some of my ideas is that because I'm so cynical, since I was a kid, you know, when I, when I was 17 years old, I picked up a dime. This was 1964. Uh, I picked up a dime, and the dime had copper on it. And that was Gresham's Law. Gresham's Law says when fake money enters the system, real money goes into hiding. So because my rich dad had educated me, when I looked at that dime, I said, what does that mean? He says, you better start finding some real dimes. So now 17 years old, I would caddy and do anything to make a few bucks. I'd go down to the bank and I'd buy, you know, rolls of co silver coins like dimes and quarters, sometimes half dollars. I didn't have much money. And I'd look for that copper lining. And if it had copper in it, I just gave it back to the bank and got dimes and quarters without this copper lining. It's fake money. Again, Gresham's Law states... When fake money enters the system or bad money enters the system, good money goes into hiding. So the, as far as I'm concerned, and you talk to your financial planner, I have no stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETF. I only invest in things they cannot print. So that's been my rule of thumb. If you can get gold and silver, I hold that instead of cash. 
because if I need cash, I just take my gold down to my my gold and silver guy, and I get cash. So those are my philosophies. I make no money from this. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I simply tell you what I do. And what I do is I just don't trust my government. I don't trust the government. I mean, the, I don't trust Biden. I mean, that the Biden crime family. You notice he talked about, Jim talked about the Ukraine and China. Mm-hmm. Where was Biden getting his money? Ukraine, Russia, China. I just don't trust him. You have the Federal Reserve Bank, which is really a cartel. It's it's really fascism. A definition of fascism is when a private enterprise owns a public service. So the Fed is run by a bunch of very powerful bankers, but it puts out the Fed as into the government service. That's fascism. So I don't trust them, and I definitely don't trust Wall Street. You know, in Wall Street, only people that make money are insiders. So if you read Rich Dad Poor Dad, especially my book, Cash Flow Quadrant, there's E, S, that's the self-employed small business who pay the highest taxes. You have B, which is big business, 500 employees or more. Or I doesn't stand for investor. It stands for insider. So for like, you know, like Sarah, when you bought your first Lake Fund property real estate, you're an insider of the deal. So Rich Dad stays away from all the pundits like financial planners and all that stuff. If you like them, knock yourself out. That's your choice. But simply said, I don't trust anything the government can print. I'd rather have what's real. So if I leave you with that as part of our series, we started with Kenny McElroy on real estate and this series with Jim Records. What do you see in 2023? May I remind you one more time, watch these videos repeatedly if you have time. Don't trust everybody on YouTube because some of them are charlatans and fakes. You know, for those who are in, invested with Sam Beckman Freed or fraud, as Jim calls it, I feel for you, you know. But it was not a mistake. Uh, Jim kind of covered that in his first book, Currency Wars. Jim has been through the mill as I have. So with that said, I personally don't trust anything that can be printed. If I want to eat steak, I don't want to eat paper steak, you know. <laughs> Any final words there, Sarah? <laughs> let him, what's the, what was the Marie Antoinette? Let him eat cake. Yours is let him eat steak. Um, yeah. No, great show. 2023 is going to be an interesting year, as we've mentioned. Yeah. And uh, it's now's the time to study. You know, wh- what yeah. can you do? Study. It's time to get smarter with your money. Back there is my cash flow board game. For those who haven't played it, please pay it because your biggest asset is this found between this year and this year. It's called your brain or your mind. Play the cash flow repeatedly. Understand how cash is flowing because if you cannot control cash flow, they'll eat you alive. So it's basic financial education. That's what Rich Dad stands for. I thank all those who have supported the Rich Dad radio program for the year 2020. And 2023 is going to be our best year ever because we're prepared for it. So thank you all for watching the Rich Dad Radio Show. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Feliz Navidad, Happy Holidays. But please prepare for 2023 because what will be happening is the smart will getting richer and the uninformed will be getting poorer. Best of luck for 2023.